Hello biology students! Today we're going to be learning about the cell membrane, which we've mentioned, but now we're going to learn about it in super detail. This is the third page of notes for this topic. Let's jump right in. So, when we're talking about the cell membrane, we have to remember what the cell membrane's major job or function was. Okay, so what is its job or function? Well, we have a fancy word for the job we used to talk about, which was to decide what can come in and out, and we call that selectively permeable. Try saying that, selectively permeable. And that's a new vocab word. This job means that it only, the cell membrane only allows some materials to enter or exit through its cell membrane. It acts like a guard. It only picks some that can come in and out. So it selects. And permeable means allows things through. Selects what it allows through. There is a word that means the same exact thing that sadly you also need to know and that is semi-permeable which means somewhat permeable somewhat lets things in so two new vocab words to highlight or make it a different color and it's just about letting certain things in and out if i make the animation go which things can go through these little ninja stars that actually represent water and what about these big structures were they allowed to get through let's look at one more time no, they weren't getting through. So the cell membrane is deciding that only some select things can go through. Somewhat things can go through. All right, let's keep going. The next thing is we're going to learn about this structure that is part of the cell membrane, and it's called a phospholipid. It is this weird-looking thing that looks like kind of a bobby pin or a hair clip with two tails. We call this a phospholipid, which has two parts to it, phospho and lipid. Phospho sounds kind of familiar, right? Something related to ATP. Sounds like the word phosphate, okay? Lipid, we learned before. Lipid means fat. It's one of our macromolecule categories. And we're going to really break it up into those two parts. So let's learn about it. This part, which is circular, is our phosphate. When we were drawing ATP, were phosphates circular? Yes, same exact thing, phosphate. And then these bottom things are called lipids. Sometimes we call them lipid tails. All right, so this structure is the major structure that makes up the parts of the cell membrane. So if we look at the cell membrane, we actually can look at this picture. We can see these phosphates and tails that are lipid, and we see that there's one going up this way, and there's one that's going in the opposite direction, and they're in a big, long line. So big, long line of them with the phosphate heads on the top and some where the phosphate heads are on the bottom with the tails facing inwards. We call this double layer a phospholipid bilayer because the prefix bi means two and the cell membrane is made of this. So I would draw a representative picture where you can see the head and the tails and where the tails are facing each other inwards and the heads are on the outside. And you need to draw the picture. Why? Because really this head layer, the phosphate part, is considered to be polar. We've learned about the word polar. Polar is related to what other molecule we've recently been learning. Ah, water! All right, and a synonym for the word polar is hydrophilic, which has this prefix hydro for water. Philic means loving, so we call this phosphate water loving. And what is it near, if we look at the picture? Water. So make sure you draw water there and really write water loving on top of this new word hydrophilic. Phosphates like to be in the water. But what about these tails? Do it, they seem like they're drawn in the blue water? No. So what do we think about a word that could mean scared of stuff? What do we call someone who's scared of spiders or scared of heights? We call it a phobia. The nonpolar are not liking water, water scared part, hydrophobic, is this lipid part. And if we think about it, do oils that are lipids or fats, do they like to be stuck with the water? No, lipids hate water. And then we have another part of the heads. And what were the heads called again? They were polar, hydrophilic. And so because we have these two layers, they actually are able to keep the cell with water on the inside of the cell and water on the outside of the cell. Pretty cool, all right? And this is how they act like a bodyguard. They're deciding what can come in and out because there's these two layers, one layer that loves water, one layer that hates water. Pretty cool, okay.
Let's keep going. Now, it's hard to envision that previous picture, but it's really a three-dimensional thing, right? Where there's all sorts of other weird proteins actually embedded in that phospholi phospholipid bilayer. Bilayer meaning one layer here, one layer here, right? But really, a cell is kind of circular, right? It looks like a sphere. So if we were to look at it and we crack it open, think about this like a tennis ball, the cell is the tennis ball, we cut it in half, we would see water on the inside where there's all these yellow phosphates and we see water on the outside part, right? So the tails again, they're nonpolar, they're scared of water. We called nonpolar or scared of water, what other word? Hydrophobic. So notice that the tails are always in the center, okay? So they're avoiding the water, right? They're this white part. And the yellow part, these phospho, um, the phosphate heads, they love the water. That's why they're near the water. Okay? So just so you see it three-dimensionally. So we call the cell membrane a special name. We call it a fluid mosaic model. Now there's two parts to this word, this idea of fluid mosaic, fluid and mosaic. Let's do mosaic first. What's a mosaic in the first place? Let's think art class. Well, in a mosaic in art class looks like a beautiful picture. And the beautiful picture to make it look like a rose, is it all one piece? No, there's lots of little pieces that make it up. And that is what a mosaic is, just like for the cell membrane. It has lots of parts that create something complex. And guess what? That's really what the cell membrane looks like. Before we were just looking at the phospholipids, those things that look like the, the bobby pins, but now we're adding in all these other things that are embedded into the bilayer, these blue things that are like proteins. Weird. Lots of complex stuff that we're now able to see in this picture. So it's a mosaic, lots of parts. And we call it fluid because, guess what? Like water it's going to be able to move. I love this animation. It shows it moving. So guess what? The cell membrane, we can't think of it as super simple. We have to think about it as mosaic, complex with many parts. We can't think about it as just standing there and not doing anything. All these weird structures are actually moving a little bit. Think about these like actually moving. And that makes sense because they're all surrounded by water on either side. So anything that would be floating on water would move a little bit, right? Last but not least, there's a couple of those parts that we need to know. I've been mentioning these things that are really embedded, and here they're purple. We call these things transport proteins. These things, they're going to be able to move food and waste in and out. So remember how we said the cell membrane is like a this semi-selectively permeable, it can only let some things in and out. Well, these channel proteins or transport proteins, they have almost like a tunnel that goes through them. I like to think of it as a road tunnel. And some of them are closed at times and will open at other times. So cool. It lets certain things in and out that are really big. All right, we'll practice that in class. The last thing that's embedded is this yellow, weird-looking structure that I think looks like honeycomb that you would see a bee make, right? It has these little, um, like, little structures here. And those are between the phospholipid molecules. They actually allow for both stability at times and fluidity at other times because they're embedded. So when they're embedded, it might restrict some of the movement that we saw that was fluid, Right? And sometimes, because they're there, it actually will allow the cell membrane to move a little bit more. So we think of cholesterol usually as a bad thing in our diet, but a little bit of cholesterol is actually pretty important to us, but not a ton. We don't want too much cholesterol because it will clog our arteries. All right, you made it through the cell membrane. It was pretty complex. That's why we call it a fluid mosaic, and we will practice this weird structure in class. Good job, guys.